All right, so this first video for chapter three, we're gonna be solving systems of equations. We've got four different methods that we're gonna be using. And so first, what I wanna give you is just the general idea of exactly what it is we're gonna be doing when I tell you to solve a system of equations. So you know a solution to one equation is whatever number or numbers make that equation true. So it's the same with systems, it's just that there are multiple equations to deal with. So when we say to solve a system, Solving a system means finding any points. And I guess let's let's put the S in parentheses, maybe one point, maybe multiple points. Finding points that make both equations true. So finding the solution could mean multiple different things. So we've got four different possibilities for what you could see, I guess, different definitions for the types of systems that we could be dealing with here. So we could have a consistent system, and a consistent system has at least one solution. Whereas an inconsistent system has no solutions. Okay, so it is possible that when we go to look for solutions, we don't actually find any at all. And so we'll talk about what exactly that means in the context of the two graphs. Um, independent means that there is exactly one solution. So one and only one. And dependent means infinitely many solutions. Okay, so a system can either be consistent or inconsistent. You can't be both at the same time. And a solution can either be independent or dependent. All right, so if it's inconsistent, it's just inconsistent. If it's consistent, it can be either independent or dependent. So we're going to have three different types of linear systems that we could be dealing with. And since we're starting with the graphing method, I'm going to be showing you just really quickly what some different options could look like for graphs. Okay, so here's one option. Remember, like I said, we're gonna have three different possibilities to so make sure you're leaving yourself the appropriate amount of space. Okay, so like I said, if it's inconsistent, it's just inconsistent. There's no further description. So that's one possibility. So our system of equations could be inconsistent. And then again, like I said, if it's consistent, it can be one or the other of these. So a solution can be consistent and independent, or a system can be consistent and dependent. Okay, so let's look back at these definitions when we go to graph our functions here. So inconsistent means no solutions. When we're talking about the solutions that make an equation true, points that make an equation true, that means it's a point on the first equation and it's a point on the second equation. So if there are no solutions, that means there literally isn't a single point that's on the first line, that's also on the second line. So what that means is that our graphs never ever intersect each other. And the only way for two graphs to never ever intersect each other is for them to be parallel. Okay, so an inconsistent system means we're dealing with two parallel lines. So you might have a line like that, and then you're gonna have another line that runs perfectly parallel to it, like that. So since those lines will never intersect each other, they're never gonna have any sort of overlapping point, so they have no solution, and that's what makes it inconsistent. Okay, consistent and independent means that there is at least one solution and it's exactly one solution. So exactly one solution means they intersect each other perfectly in one point. So let's say we've got something like this. You know, here's one line. And then the other line can do absolutely anything besides be parallel to it. As long as it's not parallel, they're going to intersect at some point. So if it looks like that, so you can see right there, there's an intersection point between the two of them. 
And then finally, what it means to be consistent and dependent. If there are infinitely many solutions, that means that the lines are intersecting over and over and over and over again. The only way for lines to intersect an infinite number of times is for lines to be the exact same. So let's say we've got that right there. And the only way for them to have an infinite number of solutions is if this is technically the exact same line. And then that means that every single point along the line technically qualifies as an intersection point. Okay, so now that you kind of know the vocabulary, we're going to deal with our first two ways that we're going to solve these systems, and they're both by using graphs. Okay, so first way, oops, that bled through a little bit, um, solving the system of equations using a calculator table. Okay, so I want to show you guys how we can use the calculators, and I am going to forgot to bring a calculator home which is so dumb um, so here I have the software on my computer so I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how you're gonna do this so it'll look like this so first of all our equations that we're dealing with are in standard form so what you can do is so you can see over here on the left this is what your calculator you know the body of the calculator would look like and here's what's gonna show up on the screen okay so what you want to do is you want to be able to input our standard form equation like we're in. So you're going to press the menu key and then you're going to do number three for graph entry slash edit. And then it's going to ask what kind of equation. So select two for equation. And then you're going to input a line. So, so far you've done three, two, one, and we want to put a line in standard form. So that is the third option. There. And then it allows you to just input the exact line. So we have x plus y equals 3. So that means we want 1x plus 1y equals 3. And then hit enter and it's going to graph the equation like that. Okay, now let's repeat the exact same process. So hit the tab key. Hit the tab key right here. You're going to be able to input another function. And so now we can put in the second one. So negative 2x plus 3x. Just y, so 1y equals negative 6. Okay, so we do that. Again, hit enter, and I'll graph the function for you. So you can see the graph in front of you. Um, we can see the intersection point as well. It's right there. So if we were to count over, it's at the point 3, comma 0. So you could just write that down, but what I want to show you is how to use a table. And that would be really useful just in case it's not like perfectly right on the screen. So what I want you to do is hit this control button, the blue one and then hit the letter T for table. Oh, come on, yes there are. Okay, um, apparently that is not going to work, so I don't wanna mess with anything. Um, well, I'll just show you how to do this in class. So this one, luckily for us, we're able to see exactly where that is intersecting right in front of us, so that is the point three zero. So back to the page, they are intersecting at the point three zero. And like I said, I'll go over exactly how to use the calculator table when we're in class. All right, so example two, we're going to solve by graphing, and same thing with example three. So let me remind you guys how to graph these. These are in standard form. Whenever we're in standard form, you solve using x and y intercepts. So standard form. Use the x and y intercepts. If we're in slope intercept form, then we would plot the point and then use the slope to graph, but we're going to do this, the um, x and y intercepts because we're in standard form. So start with the first one. First graph is x minus 2y equals 0. So we start by finding the x-intercept. So for the x-intercepts, we plug in 0 for y, so we just end up with x equals 0. Okay, and then for our y-intercepts, we plug in 0 for x, and so we have negative 2y equals 0. And to get the y by itself, we divide both sides by negative 2. So 0 divided by any number still comes out to be 0. So my x-intercept is 0. My y-intercept is also 0, which means as of this point, I, I only have a single point to go off of. So we want to get at least one more. So plug in anything you want. Um, we could plug in just 1 for x if you wanted to. We could plug in 2, whatever. Um, so let's plug in x equals 2. And again, the reason we're doing that is because the x and y intercept were the same. It's just both at the origin. So we need to find another point. So plug in 2 for x, 2 minus 2y equals 0. 
so I can subtract this 2 from both sides. So I get negative 2y equals negative 2 and divide by that negative 2. So I end up with y equals 1. So when x equals 2, y equals 1, so 2, 1 is another point that I can plot. And then you'll look and see what the slope is in between these two points. You can just continue that pattern of up 1 over 1 and you can plot as many points as you can within that grid. Since we're solving by graphing, you want to make sure that this is an, as accurate as you can possibly make that graph. Okay, because you want to look for exactly when they intersect each other, so in order to know that, you need to be super accurate. All right, second graph. We've got x plus y equals 6. So start with our x-intercepts. So you plug in 0 for y, and if you plug in 0 for y, we get x equals 6. And for our y-intercepts, plug in 0 for x, and we get y equals 6. Okay, so start with x equals 6. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for y equals 6, we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can see this down 6 over 6 reduces down to just a 1 to 1 ratio. So we can follow this 1 to 1 ratio, and you can see there's our intersection point. So your answer would be that point where they intersect. So there it is right there. You want to make sure you can identify it. It's over 4 units and up 2. So that would be 4 comma 2. And that intersection point would be your answer. Okay, let's do the same thing with number three. Okay, so this one, oh, I'm sorry, we have to describe them. So the description is that they would be consistent and independent. So just using those definitions that we had on the previous page. All right, so this one, number one. Start with our x-intercept for this first graph. So we plug in 0 for y, and when we do that, we have 6x equals 12. And to get the x by itself, divide both sides by 6. So x equals 2 is our x-intercept, so let's plot that point right there. And for y, we plug in 0 for x, so we end up with negative 4y equals 12. And get y by itself by dividing out that negative 4. So we end up with, I'm sorry, y equals negative 3. So you can plot that point, so down one, two, three. So look at the slope. Between points we go up three over two, so repeat that pattern. Up three over two, up three over two, and you can even reverse it by going down three into the left two, and then connect the dots. Remember the key idea here is accuracy, because you want to know exactly where that intersection is happening. Second graph, this one. So start with the x-intercepts, plug in zero for y, and I will have negative 6x equals 24. Divide by negative 6 in order to get x by itself. So I get negative 4 for my x-intercept. So go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. Go ahead and plot that. And for my y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. And I'll have 4y equals 24. So now I get the y by itself by dividing out that 4. So I get y equals 6. That's my y-intercept. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So look at the ratio. The ratio is up 6 over 4. So I can repeat that. I can go down 6 and over to the left 4. Just pretend you can go one more box. So connect the dots. And these are actually parallel. If you look, they've got the exact same slope. That 6 to 4 ratio is the same as this 3 to 2 ratio. So they end up being inconsistent because they have no solution.